Hi everyone, this is Anil. Welcome to session one of uh, ServiceNow Certified Implementation Specialist IRM preparation. Uh, so this video is for 10 minutes. So I'm gonna make uh, videos of size 10 minutes uh, and we will conduct as many sessions as required to cover all the syllabus. So the first one is, uh, in the first session we'll talk about ServiceNow store releases and uh, what is the store release version for uh, the GRC uh, uh, applica applications, the store apps. So for that, we'll go to ServiceNow store and then find the different GRC applications there. So we'll start with GRC. Policy and compliance management, we'll start with that. So this is the first one, let's open this. Now here we can check uh, what is the version and the compatibility. So the current version is 17.0.1. And if you look at other app versions, you will see that uh, uh, the previous versions are, uh, so this is a minor release as you can see, uh, but then earlier releases are 16.0.3, 15.0.3 and so on. Now this 17.0.1 uh, is uh, compatible with Vancouver, Utah and Tokyo. And this is released in the month of August, 2023. And here it talks about what has changed, what is fixed. But again, as I mentioned, there's a minor release, then there's a major release which happened as part of uh, 16.0.3 in the month of February. And here we have a lot more changes compared to the minor one. So this is how you can check uh, the various releases. And then we also have a patch release, uh, 15.0.3 for Utah and Tokyo, and then 15.0.1 for Tokyo and 14.2.0 for Tokyo. Right? So yeah, so the idea of uh, showing this is to help you understand how to check the version history for a given uh, service no product in store. We can do the same thing for uh, regulatory change management. So, so this one, and it has the current version is 16.0.0. If you see here, the previous one is this is a patch release. Uh, this is at least to, uh, to make sure that it works with Vancouver. And then 13.0.0, which is minor release for Utah and Tokyo. That is that. Uh, so let's move on. And then we have, uh, in terms of exam preparation, we'll first look at the, the blueprint. So we'll start from here. Now this is the exam blueprint, and it talks about how to prepare for the exam, what, is the, uh, what are the different uh, topics. Right, so we'll quickly jump to the section. So if you, depending on how you have taken the implementation course, the there is a guideline in terms of what other courses you have to complete. Like for example, if you have taken a instructional led training like ILT, then uh, uh, you'll have to do you'll do the fundamentals, which is on demand. Implementation is instructor led, and then there is classic risk assessment fundamentals, RCM essentials, and uh, audit management essentials. Now, if you have taken the IRM course uh, on demand, then regulatory change management is already covered as part of this. So you don't have to do it separately, which is why you only have four courses here versus five here. Right? But basically the content you'll cover is same for both of them. And you also have some sample questions which you can go through it. Right? I'll post the links on the community link, which will have this video. And next we'll move on. So GRC labels and names. So for example, entity class, this is the SN underscore GRC underscore profile underscore class, entity type. There are some common tables, right? Entity type is SN GRC profile type, entity SN underscore GRC underscore profile, control objective SN underscore compliance underscore policy underscore statement. And then some of the service now terms and alternate terms. For example, control objective is also called control, control template, requirement, policy statement, 
entity is called scope definition, scope object, target profile, entity type is entity group, control is control instance, risk statement is risk template, issue is findings. Right? So these are some of the alternate terms which are used uh, uh, as part of various client engagements. Uh, and there's a service no term for that. Now, if you observe here, uh, SN underscore GRC is the scoped application name. And that is a prefix to all these uh, table names. Now, when it comes to GRT, mature, GRC maturity level and use cases, so there are like the first one is zero or manual, which means there's all everything is tracked through spreadsheets. And then there is one hyphen basic semi automated IRM process, adoption limited to IRM organizations, mostly bottom up, documented, centralized, centrally managed policies and compliance. Uh, so that's about the basic one. And then there's two repeatable visibility and performance. Uh, and then we have expand IRM to two to three use cases, adoption, expansion to process and control risk owners, monitoring on point and time basis, visibility through dashboards and performance analytics, start top to bottom, uh, leverage, leveraging entry engine, right? So this is uh, what you will see in an organization that has that is at level two maturity, which is repeatable. So next is managed, where you have predict and prioritize. In this case, RM is implemented in four to five use cases, mature existing use cases with future further automated capability, cross-functional process automation, continuous real-time monitoring of control performance, risk scoping, reduction in admin overhead, etc. And then we have four, which is optimized, integrated enterprise-wide. So here, IRM is fully operated in four to five. In this case, so the difference is IRM is implemented, whereas here, IRM is fully adopted. Risk-aware enterprise and embedded controls, uh, control management by risks, and continuous control monitoring and continuous risk assessment across multiple platforms. Single risk and control framework across enterprise available uh, at all stakeholders, like line of businesses, management, and so on. So these are different uh, maturity levels and use cases. So again, I'll repeat, zero manual, then there is basic, repeatable, managed, optimized. Zero, one, two, three, four. The next is uh, various roles. Uh, so first is uh, technical consultants. These are different roles you'll see as part of implementation team. Technical consultants, risk and compliance experts, and primary stakeholders. Uh, these are like the compliance and risk uh, and compliance management project team, project lead, compliance manager, compliance analyst. Then there is a risk project team, project lead, risk manager, risk analyst, platform admin, platform dev, CMDB plus foundation data owners, internal audit teams, right? So now uh, these are different teams and uh, the team structure. And then frequently used tables for import or integration. One is authority document, then there is citation, then there's control object. And uh, customers control metrics or risk register. So this goes into control object. So next is how do we proceed with an implementation? First is we evaluate the current state, then you leverage now create to uh, to make use of all the artifacts that are provided by ServiceNow, and then prioritize journey, like identify what is your uh, least resistance path and uh, uh, low hanging fruits, and then uh, prioritize the journey accordingly, and come up with action items, provide, uh, come up with use case examples, and yeah, and then here are some of the example projects. One is Greenfield implementation, where organization is going from private to public. Then next is replace legacy systems built from existing, and so on. So these are the different uh, use cases. Next, sample implementation approach, phase one, regulatory guidance, policy lifecycle management, control mapping, control attestation, data setup. Phase two, control testing, issue management, policy exceptions, phase two slash three, risk register, risk framework, phase three, risk assessment, continuous monitoring, and phase four is risk events. So these are different phases in which you can do an implementation. Again, this is a sample implementation approach. So basically the summary is you start by managing policies and controls, and then you slowly move on to control testing, issue management, policy exceptions, and then you go to risk level. Uh, risk register, risk framework, and then 
implement risk assessment and after that implement continuous monitoring to monitor your risk and uh, compliance status and then finally manage risk events right so so that is scope of this video we'll continue the remaining topics in the next video thank you